Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of our honeypots today received a number of responses, actually, that were likely sort of a side effect, uh, maybe some spillover from recent denial of service attacks. There have been a number of very high volume denial of service attacks recently. And while these type of attacks are not as much in the news anymore as they used to be a couple of years ago, recently they have been picking up and one particular type of attack that has sort of been thrown into the mix more than in the past is LDAP amplification attacks. Similar to many of the other UDP based attacks, a small LDAP request that is spoofed can cause a large response to be sent to a victim. Now, with LDAP not really being a protocol that should be used across the internet regularly, it's a little bit easier to defend against them than against, uh, let's say, DNS attacks. But uh, recently, these attacks have reached about a terabit per second and more in some cases. So what we saw in our honeypots was these responses coming back without our honeypots actually sending requests out. So. I expect by accident or with all of the traffic happening there, someone did spoof a couple packets from the wrong IP address. And as a result, we saw the responses coming back. We looked a little bit closer into the origins of these responses. And one thing we found somewhat regularly as far as we could tell, you couldn't really always uh, tell based on the response, but uh, these responses came from active directory servers, so domain controllers that people had exposed to the internet. This is something you really shouldn't do and LDAP being not an encrypted protocol, at the very least LDAP as the uh, LDAP over TLS should be used, but even then it's probably a better idea to keep those domain controllers tucked away safely inside your network. And a little bit concerning that there are enough of these domain controllers out there exposed to actually be used in these amplification attacks. So make sure you're blocking LDAP at your perimeter to not become part of the problem. Of course, if you are the target of one of these terabit per second attacks, then blocking LDAP at your perimeter is probably not going to make a difference. And well, remember flow spec, what we talked about on Monday, because it sort of caused problems for a uh, Century link. Well, uh, that's sort of the protocol that's really designed to block these kind of attacks. Then we got a little bit an odd uh, change in the configuration for Microsoft Edge in version 85. Microsoft is now allowing SHA-1 signed certificates again. Uh, this has been removed uh, several years ago in most browsers and Microsoft is bringing it back now uh, as an option. You have to enable it and then these certificates have to be signed by local trust anchors. So can use them for your internal certificate authority, but not for any sort of external global certificate authorities. I actually think this makes a lot of sense. I ran into this uh, actually just uh, two weeks ago. I was updating uh, UPS uh, with a web-based admin interface that still actually, it wasn't SHA-1, it was uh, TLS 1.0 was the highest it supported. They came out with a firmware to support newer versions of uh, TLS. I updated it uh, to avoid some of these uh, depreciation issues. And the result is now that this web interface has actually become quite unstable. So something is better to still keep something like SHA-1 or TLS 1.0 around because the other option often is to go clear text and you should try to get rid of SHA-1, but in the end, it's better to have a SHA-1 signed certificate than no certificate at all or a broken UPS. 
We got updates from Trend Micro for its Apex One product. Uh, this includes the on-premise as well as the software as a service version of it. Also macOS clients as well as Windows are affected by these vulnerabilities. Mostly privilege escalation vulnerabilities, so nothing super critical here. And you know, I avoid talking about breaches here on the podcast because it quickly always becomes a victim shaming. The next breach I'm going to talk about is not actually because it's a breach. It's not a breach, but shows some of the dangers in just simply reporting about breaches. Some news outlets apparently did report about voter data being leaked in several states like Michigan, well, it turns out that the leaked voter data, while it was found on some uh, dark web website, was actually public data. I know here in Florida, where I live, pretty much all the data that you are supplying when you are registering to vote is made public. And you can easily request a DVD with all the data from uh, the uh, local department of state, I believe it is, that uh, runs this database. And you can find copies freely available on various websites. So double check before someone is talking about a breach to see if it's actually a breach or just some public data nicely wrapped up. This is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.